deny self and pick up your cross. That's it. So today is a very important day in biblical history. We get to celebrate Palm Sunday today, don't we? And we get to celebrate the time that Jesus came in, they waved palms in the air, all of that stuff. It's great, great to think about that. But what if we could celebrate that all week? What if it was more than just Sunday, right? So today I want to talk about the call. Now, this week is also a very important week in sports, too, right? Because it's opening week for Major League Baseball, right? And my ever-favorite, ever-loving Chicago Cubs open up against the Texas Rangers on Thursday. But as I've been watching spring training, you get to see all of these different players get the call. And it's so fun to watch these guys, they're kids to me, um, but these young men work so hard and so diligently at their sport, at what they're good at. And they work effortlessly day in and day out until that one day that they get their phone call from their coach saying, you just got promoted to the major leagues, right? It's such an exciting moment to hear. Maybe you've had that in a job, right? You worked so hard at your job. You worked from the bottom up, right? Been there 52 years, right? And you make it to the top, finally. And you get, you get that call that says, sir, ma'am, we would like you to be vice president of operations at Riverton Christian Church, right? We would like you to do that. It's so amazing to get that call. But you know what I've noticed about ball players, anybody who's in athletics, anybody who works diligently and so hard at their job, is it's more than just one day a week that they do their job, right? That they work, that they practice, that they get better at what they do, right? What if church was more than just Sunday? What if church was more than just today? You know, I've heard it said time and time again, go to church, right? Get baptized. Make sure that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, and then you're on the right track to becoming a Christian, right? What if it's more than that? What if there's so much more than just believing? What if when we walked out of these doors, we continued to worship? What if we continued to go into our cars and drive down the street and go to wherever we're going and continue to worship God? What if we sat down at a restaurant wherever you're going to lunch this afternoon and instead of getting out your phones to look at it, you pulled out a Bible and started reading it? What if it was more than just today? More than just Sunday? Today, I want to talk about the call. You all are getting called up today. You're all getting called up to serve today, but not just today. Every single day, every single moment, every single second of your life. We're going to be in Luke chapter 9 today, and we're going to take a look at this moment that Jesus talked to his disciples, and he said some truly amazing stuff. Luke chapter 9, in verse 22, says this. It says, And he said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, by the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. And then he said to all of them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their own cross, and follow me. 
For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Your Bible might say might lose or forfeit their soul. Verse 26, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the son of man will be ashamed of them when it comes in his glory and in the glory of the father and of the holy angels. Verse 27, truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. There's the call. Deny self, right? Take up your cross, follow Jesus, right? Jesus not only lays out all of the requirements for following him in this verse, but he gives the call. He says, if anybody wants to come to you, come to him, come to Jesus, deny themselves, take up their cross and follow, follow me. He's calling you. He did call you from the very beginning. He will continue to call you every single day to take up your cross daily and to follow him. So my first question is this, who initiates a call? Who initiates a call? You see, Jesus is the one who gets the call. I had a very great conversation. I got a text message the other day from somebody, and they said they got a call from Jesus Christ. It was on their caller ID, a call from Jesus Christ. I said, did you answer it? Don't let that thing go to voicemail, right? Did you answer that? Jesus is the one that initiates the call. It's our responsibility to answer the call. Amen? It's our responsibility to respond. The truth is that our hearts will never make that decision, though, without the power of the Holy Spirit because of sin, right? Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the Bible teaches that no one does any good apart from God. But Jesus wants us to follow him. And so he's the one that calls us. He calls us. The call is to follow Christ as the leader of our lives. He's the one who does everything, right? Romans chapter 10 says this. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's it, right? You will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believed and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. So becoming a follower of Christ is about the forgiveness of our sins, but it's also saying, Jesus, you're Lord of my life, not me. You're the one that needs to take charge, God, not me. The call is not to be forgiven and then just sit and wait. The call is to be forgiven and then follow, to be forgiven and follow. And Jesus invites us to do this. He invites us to follow him. And Lent, this time that we've been celebrating over these past several days, several weeks, Lent can be a journey that we travel on in following Jesus. Oftentimes we give up things. We fast. We fast food. Um, or we give up other of our fun things that we like to do every single day, right? This invitation is extended to anyone, though, who wishes to be his disciple. And if anyone is interested in following Jesus... You're invited to do so today. But there will not be a physical map telling you on how to find him. Instead, Jesus invites people into a lifestyle with him, the lifestyle of self-denial. So once we answer the call, we must define the call. We must figure out what the call is. And the way to figure out what the call is is to practice self-denial. Now, practicing self-denial and then gaining an awareness of self-denial is important during the season of Lent because we remember the one who chose to forego his own power and instead went willingly to the cross. Jesus could have taken himself down from the cross. He was actually asked to do so, wasn't he? And he said, I am not going to do it. He could have sent his angels down to pick him up off of that cross and carry him away from all the madness that was happening around him, couldn't he? He could have getting, been, been taken away from all of the yelling and the mutilation, all of the screaming and hollering that were happening on the cross, but he decided to take on the sin of the world. 
and sit on that cross and stand on that cross for your sins and for mine. He chose to do that. You see, a disciple of Jesus will deny himself. A disciple of Jesus will take up his or her own cross daily. And a disciple of Jesus Christ will follow him. You see, by taking up this cross, we put on, we put to death our sinful desires. And and this is a task that must happen every single day. There is sin everywhere. Thoughts in our minds that we don't tell anybody about. Places and things and oh my goodness, you turn on the TV and it's every other half second. There's something really just bad out there, isn't there? You can get on social media. You can look, you could flip one time and scroll down and see four or five different things of sin just happening throughout the world, right? We must choose to not participate in that. We must choose self-denial. And so last week, we looked at this practice of obedience, of obeying, of obeying what Jesus calls us to do. Now, while obedience and self-denial sound similar, they're not the same thing. So self-denial is on the other side of obedience. Obedience is choosing to let Jesus speak into our lives. We obey what Jesus says. Self-denial is choosing to ignore the outside world, to ignore ourselves and what's happening, and to listen to Jesus. Does that make sense? This is why self-denial is so important for following Christ. You, you choose to ignore your own voice when following Jesus. He's the one who speaks first, and then we listen. Then we choose to deny everything and follow what he says. And if we don't follow Christ, then we follow ourselves and the other things of this life. So what's the opposite of denying yourself? The opposite of denying yourself is being selfish, right? It's in the word, selfish, right? It means instead of following the kingdom of God, you're following the kingdom of me. And in the kingdom of me, what you do with your life is defined by what you want to do and not what Jesus wants to do. Jesus says here that we want to follow that road. We want to save ourselves if we must if we have to, we must try to save ourselves, then we really are on the road that leads to death. And if we are not a follower of Christ, then our destiny is death. That not only means physical death, but spiritual death as well. That means that when we die, we will not live in heaven, but we will be in hell apart from God. Now, here's the flip side. Here's the good part. Are you ready? The flip side of this is that when we live our lives for the kingdom of God, we die to ourselves and we find true life in Christ. We find eternal life. This not only means that we will live in heaven with him for all eternity, but Jesus gives us this real life right now, right? Your kingdom come down, fill the earth, let it be a vessel for me. Let me be a vessel for you. I said that backwards. Let me be a vessel for you, God. This means that we're not really, this also means that if we are a follower of Christ, but we're not really following Christ, our lives are falling short of what they could be, and we're missing out. We're missing out on the most important part of life. Following Christ means we deny ourselves. But what does that really mean when we deny ourselves? Well, when we deny ourselves, we make a commitment. We make a commitment to the call. What are the things that keep us from following Christ? Think of a few things in your head. What are a few things that keep us from following Christ? Right now, if you're not a Christian and you're out there, what's keeping you from becoming a follower of Christ? Those are the things that we need to think about. What everything really comes down to is sin and pride. We run so hard after the things that fade away and it leaves us empty. They're, they're one of my favorite kings in the Bible is King Solomon. And he wrote a book um, about his life in Ecclesiastes. It's, it's a, uh, an, a truly interesting book. And King Solomon sought the world and he went everywhere. 
and he saw all the things of this world. He, he wanted to find the treasures. He wanted to find all of the women in the, his life. He wanted to find uh, what happiness truly was. He searched everywhere, in and out and in and out. And so finally, at the end of his book, he said, you know what? Everything in this world is meaningless. It's worthless. Nothing brought him happiness. And so here's what he said at the end of his, his book, his, his memoir, his story. In chapter 12, he says that at the end, of the, ma- the end of the matter, all has been heard. And here's what he says. He says, here's what you must do. Fear God and keep his commandments. He sought the whole world and decided those were the four words that he wanted to end his whole book with. Fear God and keep his commandments. Let's look at it from a New Testament perspective, right? Deny self and pick up your cross. That's it. Deny self and pick up your cross. Everything in this world is vanity. Nothing matters besides your relationship with God. Nothing. Nothing matters besides your relationship with God. For God will bring every deed into judgment and and with every secret thing, whether it's good or evil. The commitment of the call that Jesus is giving us is everything in our lives. And it's lived for him and his purposes. And in the end, what we have is that is what it's make is that what makes us joyful anyways because he wants what's best for us in our lives that call is going to make us the happiest person in the world now here's the consequences of the call we made our commitment to the call what are the consequences of the call the consequences of of the call he says this follow him and find life follow yourself and find death There's nothing that you could ever do to outweigh the good from the bad. Nothing will lead you to salvation except the grace of God. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And you know, some of us are here today, and you might say you're a Christian, but you don't really follow him. Some of you might be here today, and you might come to church and say, this is what the ticket is. This is how I'm going to get into heaven. If I come to church every Sunday, I'm going to make it. I'm going to get there. But that's not what the Bible says about how we are to get into heaven, right? We want the forgiveness, but we don't want to be a disciple. We don't want to do anything. We just want to be a part of the kingdom, right? Jesus talks about these people in in Matthew chapter 7, and he talks about all of this different stuff about following him or following me. And it's not the right prayer that you need to say in your lives. It's about making a commitment to following the call in your life. Jesus, he didn't say these things in Luke chapter 9. He was the one that practiced them. He was the one that went out and did them. He was the one that denied his cross every day and followed. And so meditating during Lent on how Jesus demonstrated this self-denial is important for gaining a more complete picture of Jesus. And so as hard as self-denial might, might sound, it's a firm part of our everyday reality. We, we practice self-denial when we're training for anything, when we're studying for a test. We might practice self-denial when we're at, at a job that you might not like. Anybody had a job that they don't like? Yeah, right. <laughs> Got to make that all-American dollar, huh? We practice self-denial when we obey the laws of the land, even the speed limits. Does anybody not follow the speed limits on the road? Yeah, can I, I, I confess to God every day. I say, Father, I cannot follow that 55 mile an hour speed limit because it's too slow. Let's make it 65, all right? And then we're okay. You could choose to speed, right? Like I do, because you like to go fast or you just don't want to be late. But sometimes there are consequences to our actions when we speed or go too fast or we're too late, right? But it's a reality in life. So there are two responses to this call today. I want you to pick up the phone, okay? And I want you to do this. Answer the call. Accept Christ today. Obey. Follow. 
or don't. The choice is up to you. God gives us free will. But I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something because if you do decide to pick up that phone, if you decide to answer the call, your life will be drastically changed. Drastically changed for the better. And it doesn't happen overnight. You might think it happens overnight, but it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It takes a process called sanctification, 50 cent word for change, right? A turnaround or change. And if you do that, I promise you, you will love living for Jesus and you will practice it every day. So I want to encourage you this week, as you go through Holy Week, as you go through Opening Day Week, as you go through March Madness, whatever it is that you're going through this week, I want to ask you to do this one thing. I want, you to, I want to ask you to fix your eyes, to focus on Jesus. Focus on the why we're here. Focus on the fact that this coming Friday, when we celebrate Good Friday, it's a good Friday because Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming, and he's going to rise from the dead. And let's reflect on that all week and every aspect of our lives in whatever we're doing. Amen? Father, thank you so much for the cross. Thank you so much for sending your son down. Father, we are sorry that we're sinners. But Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that gets us through every single day. I ask, Father, that you can teach us to reflect on our lives, that you can teach us to deny ourselves daily, that we, Father, can pick up that cross and just follow you wherever you tell us to go. Father, teach us to be bold and strong in that call. And I pray that you can open doors that need open, Father, for that call, that you close doors that need closed. This morning, Father, I want to pray for those out there who haven't yet heard that call, who haven't yet started to follow. And Father, I pray that their hearts might be softened this morning, that they might hear your voice, that they might be healed from this world that we live in, Father, and that we might be able to just shine bright for you right now. Father, we love you so much. I want to thank you for this day as we continue to worship you, Father, this morning. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.